Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So, today we are going to be expanding off of something we've done in the past, but we're going to make it a little bit more extreme. So, something we have messed with is getting Earth and another object. Let's use Venus because very similar size to Earth. And when they collide, instead of just letting them explode, we make them have an extremely low rotational period. For example, for Earth, we will put it to 0.0001 hours. And for Venus, we will put it at negative 0.01. Bam. And now what this is going to do is it's going to do some magic. Now when we press play, we're going to see that the planets are spinning very quickly. So quickly that if we bring things to milliseconds, we can see them still spinning extremely fast. So what does this, what impact does this have on the collisions? Well, a lot actually. Um, by having it spin so fast, the amount of surface area exposed to the collision is pretty huge. Within the first few seconds, you can have almost the entire surface of the Earth hit. But for our purposes, we're going to test that right now. So we'll see right when they collide, we have our initial explosion and we have random bits popping up around the world of damage. Now that's because the world is spinning so fast that these spots are being hit without us actually noticing because we can't see the rotation. It's too fast. Even on my 144Hz monitor, I can't see it. YouTube does 60 FPS so it may actually look like the planets are spinning on uh, YouTube. Or does YouTube do 30? No, YouTube does 60 now. Um. But we can see now, they are going to slow down over time as they hit more. And soon it should look like they're just spinning at a normal speed as they lose it. Or they'll just keep spinning extremely quickly and we won't actually notice anything. Yeah, it looks like in this case I spun them a little bit too fast. So fast that the game won't even simulate the effects of it. So let's try it a little bit less extreme. So once again, we'll do Venus and Earth. We will only spin Earth this time so that we have a nice uh, point of reference. And let's spin it. We're gonna make it spin. Let's do, oh, that's speed, not rotational period. Um, let's make it spin once a second. So there we are, we can see Earth spinning there, and it spinning this quickly is going to have some serious effects. So let's bring it up to a second per second, 14 seconds per second, and up. Now we can obviously see, yes, the Earth is spinning very quickly, but will the game actually simulate it now? Will it? We can actually see it throwing its atmosphere off a little bit here, these little bits of gas. But that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in the explosion when it hits something. And we really need to pinpoint the moment it hits something because we will see something pretty cool happen. Which is going to be any second now. If we do it properly, of course. I mean, if we don't do it right, it won't look cool. But that's for many things. You have to actually do what you're trying to do. There we go. So we can see where it's hit. Now it's ripped part of Venus off, so it needs a little bit more Venus to move in to hit another bit of Earth. And now as Earth keeps spinning, more and more damage is going to be let among that strip of Earth. Um, Earth is actually colliding at so many points its temperature has already hit 3,000 degrees. This is pulverizing Earth. It's spinning so quickly. See the amount of objects that are being ripped off of Earth's surface? It's like a grindstone, except for planets. And now we can see the effect it's having. All of the bits of Earth's surface being ripped off. The tallest bits are going to be ripped off first. Uh, Mount Everest, if we were actually uh, in that area. We are not near Asia at all. Um, but letting things go on, we can see it's leaving a complete strip of destruction. And as it gets closer and closer to Venus, that strip widens. And we are leaving behind a lot of uh, little particles being flung around Earth, orbiting Earth, and eventually crashing into it, which is causing damage up here, 
all around Earth, but this is definitely the most brutal way to destroy a planet in this game. It's ridiculous. Earth is being absolutely annihilated at the moment. I actually like it more with the trails on. You can see everything that's happening. Uh, which... So it was probably bad that I turned it off there, um, but it, they'll come back. So as it slowly rips itself apart, we can see that now almost half of the planet is covered by just complete destruction. It's pretty ridiculous how many spots have been ripped off. But for the most part, half of Earth hasn't been hit. Half has been degraded into just complete lava, magma wasteland. Venus is being ground apart too. Um, the exact same effects occurring on Venus, and because it's not the one spinning, all of the heat's hitting this one side, and it's causing the heat to slowly diffuse through the planet, melting it. Poor Earth, though. It's having a lot of trouble. And as it slowly grinds itself apart, Venus may actually have more mass than it by the end. 50.2 moons, and what is Venus at? 36.5 so no earth is going to be more massive at the end so it's going to eat venus but at the end pretty much all of the earth is covered in damage unlike most collision types where you just have a big crater and then earth melts and then everything's better in a little bit and there's just a little crater left over you can even see here that there are just earth isn't even completely spherical now it's normally an oblate spheroid so it's not completely spherical but it's still round for the most part um in this case earth's roundness has been absolutely ruined let's give it a little bit of time to cool down so that we can see the actual damage and Oh, there's Earth. It doesn't look very familiar. Most of the water and atmosphere was thrown off of it. Um, it's very dark. What the heck? I've never seen Earth like this in Universe Sandbox 2 before. I guess just the amount of crater. Yeah, I've, I've never actually seen... If we covered in ice, it looks slightly different, but... This is interesting. This is something new. I've never uh, destroyed Earth to the point where, even after cooling down, it was still pitch black. That's pretty uh, intense. Let's see if we heat things up, if we get a change in color. Do-do-do. Do-do-do. Nope! Earth is... Earth is a goner. Congratulations. It's over. Good job, Earth. <laughs> Earth does not look... You can even see the spots where the craters were very dark areas all over the oceans. The, the planet itself is covered in craters, too. So, that's fun. So, next up, let's do one last thing, and let's see just how much damage we can get done with this. Now, we put Earth against Venus, which... Yeah, that's not super impressive, considering they're both planets, obviously there's going to be a lot of damage. But what's something that we can destroy Earth with? That's small. I think Io's pretty large, though. Charon? Mimus? There we go, let's go with Mimus. That's about the size I want. We want something that is super, super, super tiny. But we want it in Earth's atmosphere, and we want it spinning very fast. And you guys will see the amount of damage you can do to even a full-sized planet. So let's put its rotational period at 0 0.01 second. Whoops. 0 0.01. There we go. Um, and now it's going to be spinning incredibly fast. But when it hits Earth, it's going to transmit some of that rotational energy to Earth. Some of that rotational force, and Earth is going to start to spin. It's like two wheels hitting each other, except three-dimensional. Uh, we've got spheres here, or oblate spheroids. If I ever say sphere, someone in the comments would just be like, No, it's not perfect. Yes, I know. Got it. I've been yelled at enough times for that. 
but it's so much easier to say sphere, the Noblate Spheroid, and it's pretty much the same, you know, down to a little bit of a difference. Now here we go. On impacting Earth, we're gonna see Earth. Let's go to Earth, and let's check Earth's rotational period. It's at 23.9 hours, which is about normal. As time goes on and this slowly pushes into Earth, now we're at 23.8 hours, 23.7 hours, 23.6, 23.5, and we can see Earth is actually turning along with the collision. 23.3. I don't think this was enough. It was not spinning fast enough to do what we wanted. So let's do another one, and this time we will make it spin a hundred times faster. And I think that's going to have the uh, response we're looking for. What did I use before? There we are. Uh, my miss. There we are. Okay. Let's do this. Spinning 1,000 times per second. How much damage will it do? 0 0.0001. Okay, that did not give... Well, we can see this definitely did more damage, but the simulation was going too fast, so I couldn't actually... Uh, it didn't go into full detail. If you have it on full uh, fast speed like that, it'll skip a lot of it. But it's fine. We're going to do this again. But the proof of concept is certainly there. Okay, let's bring it to milliseconds or just seconds. There we go. My miss. Let's bring it down. Seconds. And that's going to be 0 0.0001. Boop. Beautiful. Look at it spin. And now you can't tell it's spinning. Now let's look at Earth. Earth's rotational period is going to be hit hard. Yeah, Earth, come on. There we go. Look at that. Within a few seconds of being hit, the Earth's rotational period is down to like... <laughs> 8 hours, 7 hours, 6 hours, 5 hours and impact and it's gonna leave a lot more damage because earth turned into it so i guess it wasn't actually that much worse than before but we're gonna do one more because this is actually pretty pretty fun to do and this time we're going to give it a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot of spin um where are you oh once again moons not small objects. Okay, so we're gonna give this a spin so high that it will pretty much instantly destroy the world even though it's so, so small. Yes, this would trigger a mass extinction of a ma very major proportion and probably end humanity, but we want to destroy the entire planet. And if I used a very small asteroid, I could do this too. This is just easier to see because it's larger. Um, so, we're just going to go to seconds once again. 0 0.0000001. Rotating every millionth of a second. Yes. Fast, fast. <laughs> now, checking Earth. Hopefully, it'll simulate it. It may be moving too fast to simulate, but, you know. Maybe the game will be nice to us. The game is paused, so I'm not going to go at years per second. Do, 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 do. Seconds per second. There we are. So, Earth's rotational period is at 23.9 hours, as usual. And now we have collision in 3, 2, 1. Oh, looks like it's already at minutes. And a few seconds later, it's going to... Oh. One minute, 
and it keeps speeding up as it goes too. The seconds, it's at 45 seconds, 40 seconds, Earth's spin is speeding up, which means more damage, more collision. And it looks like we're going to get Earth's spin to 27 seconds before it's gonna be completely gone. Look at the line of damage left behind though. And then it's left more little bits of itself ground out to finish the job. We have actually left a strip of destruction across the entire Earth. It's beautiful. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I will see you all next time. Bye!